people don't think that art and science ever blend, but they do more than you would think. And this painting is a prime example. So in 1659, Robert Boyle, who was an Irish chemist and a natural philosopher, unveiled an invention called the pneumatic engine. The device allows scientists to study what happens to living things when you removed the air that surrounds them, providing the first concrete proof that air, later identified as oxygen, matters. Sounds pretty basic, but it was foundational to our understanding of science and medicine. Some historians would argue that Boyle's pneumatic engine helped shape the scientific revolution. However, there is a darker side to the story that most people don't know. While Boyle was proud of his pneumatic engine, he was also drowning in guilt that using the pneumatic engine on animals gave him anguish. Boyle wasn't alone in his crisis. Around the world, people were grappling with the same question. Science was advancing faster than ever before, but at what cost to our humanity? And here's where the painting comes in. This very famous painting captures this exact moment in history perfectly. The anxiety, the excitement, the moral crisis of the scientific revolution. It's called an experiment on a bird in an air pump painted in 1768 by Joseph Wright of Derby. The scene depicts a natural philosopher demonstrating Boyle's air pump to an audience. Inside the glass chamber sits a bird slowly dying as the air is pumped out. The entire scene is lit by a single candle, and that candlelight shines through a glass bowl that contains a human skull. Wright uses chiaroscuro, the dramatic use of light and shadow, to illuminate 10 faces, each showing a different reaction to what they're witnessing. Wright managed to produce the entire spectrum of emotions people had towards science during the scientific revolution in a single painting. The young girls represent fear of the unknown, while their brother depicts terror at scientific progression or excitement about where it might lead. The other figures largely show curiosity, trumping compassion for other living beings. Standing in the very center is the natural philosopher himself. His face is half lit, half in shadow, a perfect visual representation of Boyle's own conflicted feelings toward the pneumatic engine. But the figure that most people skip over is arguably the most important figure in the entire painting. It's an older man sitting in the shadows on the right. He is looking directly at the human skull, contemplating the fragility of life. This is in sharp contrast to the father, the philosopher, the others that are so engrossed in their experiment that the dying bird becomes mere background noise. In fact, if you look closely, you'll see the man on the left has his pocket watch out to see how long it takes the bird to suffocate. Wright's core message, in my opinion, still rings true today, that science must be guided by an ethical and human humane conscience. You can't spell conscience without science, so why separate them in practice? If you want to see this painting in person, which I highly, highly recommend, it is currently on display at the National Gallery in London in an exhibition called The Right of Darby from the Shadows.